What is the definition of high-risk multiple myeloma? High-risk multiple myeloma refers to a subgroup of people with multiple myeloma that may not respond well to standard therapies and have poorer outcomes. Treating high-risk multiple myeloma can be challenging, but some options are available. So the high-risk um, definition, it is um, always changing. And so part of that is because our treatments get better. So something that might have been high-risk before is not considered high-risk. An example of that is deletion 13Q, which is quite prevalent and it used to be considered high-risk, but now is no longer because modern therapeutics have made that obsolete. 414 translocation is another one that historically, and is still sometimes considered high risk, but protosome inhibitors seem to really specifically improve the outcomes of that. Um, so that's why the risk definition is inherently a little bit unstable as it should be because our therapeutics keep evolving, but also our technologies get better, right? So for example, in the US, there was a very interesting presentation that 50% of patients who get fish testing done are not enriched on plasma cells. So what that means is when their bone marrow aspirate was tested, they looked at the entire aspirate, not just the myeloma cell. So that's important because you wanna know if somebody has a certain high-risk feature such as deletion 17P, is it in a few cells or many cells? Because some studies say that the amount matters. So you need to know the percentage of cells that have the abnormality, you need to know whether what's called um, allelic burden. Uh, so if you have 17P and you have two chromosomes, did you lose one or both? And there's also the mutational status, right? So is it deletion or overexpression, underexpression? So it's complicated. So I think um, ultimately the purpose of these, whatever you call high risk, should be able to pull out the patients that would be you'd be more worried about. High risk is a moving target. So it is a hard thing to define. I think the presence of 17P deletion is clearly a high-risk subset. Patients that have 14-16 translocation by fish also are a high-risk subset. The use now of 1Q amplification in combination with those high-risk factors are also concerning for high-risk disease. And patients that have routine cytogenetics, so karyotypic abnormalities, fall into a 15% of patients that are proliferative, and we call them high-risk as well. What is clinical high-risk? So the clinical high risk is really an interesting question, and I think that patients who present with true extramedullary disease at the time of initial presentation mean they have myeloma that's growing outside of a bone. That will act like high risk disease. Patients with plasma cell leukemia. The definition of high risk is really evolving a lot. So we have some data that it's old data and from the past, that says P53, 414, 1416, this was discovered I don't know if 10, 15 years ago that they had high risk. But now we are now tuning uh, this definition because we know that some P53 patients do not have high risk. They are not really high risk. And that depends on many things, on the, the proportion of cells that they have or the type of mutation or deletion that, that it, it has. We know that there are other patients by NGS or other methodologies that they may, they may have other P53 abnormalities that are not captured by FIS. And the same happens with the 414 translocation, 1416, and even novel, uh, novel abnormalities we are uh, discovering now with novel techniques. So this is really evolving. And, and at the end, uh, and, uh, and as it is evolving the treatment and the approach or the managing of, of, of this. So this is completely changing over time. What is good is that uh, we make progress, we adapt treatment again. I mean, the treatment adaptation ba based on that because maybe if we are now using a, a novel mechanism, then we can overcome the high risk. So adapt treatment and change things about regarding the biology of the patient. It's a broad definition because you have high risk uh, cytogenetic uh, ab abnormalities or aberrations, and they, they are pretty standard. It's translocation 14, 16, translocation 414, and deletion 17P, amplification 1Q, uh, and maybe even also intermediate, maybe translocation 1114. Then you also have a high level at, uh, if you have a high level of uh, LDH at diagnosis, it is a poor pronostic marker. Also the ISS scoring system, which is pretty simple, is important. And uh, then again, uh, if you have an early relapse after your transplant, transplant, then you have a very poor prognosis. 
uh, but this is more dynamic uh, uh, pronostic marker. The, other, the others can be assessed upfront at diagnosis. So this is high risk markers. It's a broad definition. Who else is considered to be high risk? Usually you, you, you talk about these high risk markers and also uh, the, the blood test with ISS. But the thing is that comorbidity is just as important. And that's something you should really uh, include uh, as, as a high risk, because then you can't have the same treatment as others, and then you are at risk. Thanks for watching. By creating a HealthTree account, you can get exclusive access to the latest HealthTree University content, track your course progress, take notes, and bookmark lessons. Visit the links in the description below to get started.